Howdy! This is part two of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Iceberg, and we'll be completing levels four through eight today. Some points have been combined for continuity, and some additional points have been added. This iceberg is brought to you by Clean Casual. It's the time here. <laughs> Level four, center of the iceberg. 44. Zapdos attacked Manectric, Luxray Tribe. Depending on the game, either a Manectric or Luxray Tribe in the Amp Plains will not listen to the player's pleas, set to attack instead. Luxray claims to see any that hide, while Manectric would prefer that they hide so he could sneak up quietly from behind. Realizing that hiding is useless, the team stands up to the challenge, but find themselves surrounded. As Dusknor claims, the tribe, quote, strike first for fear of being stricken, end quote, as they were attacked by a fearsome foe, namely Zapdos, and suffered terribly for it. What could have happened? The storms are more electrifying and intense from Zapdos's influence, and, akin to how Zapdos so quickly lashed out at the player in a similar fashion, it stands to reason that it similarly lashed out at the tribe when their paths crossed. Even with their entire tribe, which contains younger Pokémon, like Luxio or Electrike, they were unable to properly defend themselves. A. They sustained massive injuries. While the injuries may not have been fatal, this nomadic tribe would be open to attack from strong Pokémon that they would now be hard-pressed to defend themselves from. Their tribe and pack has always been able to defend themselves, but with so many gravely injured and recovering, they could have continued to suffer as they moved about, perhaps incurring true losses. B. Members of their tribe actually died. Their tribe appears very close-knit, like a nomadic family unit. Again, this could weaken the tribe considerably, making them more vulnerable to attack. Thus, they no longer have the luxury of wait and see, as if they do not begin with an attack, they forfeit the advantage of choosing the place and time of battle. The loss of any members could be traumatic and explain their offensive defense. C. In Time and Darkness, where Luxray and Luxio appear, it can be assumed that the particularly young, the Shinx, died. Dusknor says Luxray's fury is righteous and just, but what could enrage them to attack two young Pokémon and make their actions understandable? Without warning, the legendary Zapdos wildly lashed out at them, and although their older members may have been able to weather the brunt of it, their youngest, the next generation couldn't and perished. That is why their anger is righteous and just as to the unspeakable pain and horror they had to endure. This could also explain, perhaps, why only time and darkness featured the Luxray tribe, as a Shinx is introduced in Sky as a playable character or partner Pokemon. As a tribe of Pokemon that stick together, why would they attack their fellows? Or would their rage be stayed at the embodiment of what they had lost? They now strike out of fear and necessity for their very survival, a cruel reminder of the dire world that had once been their peaceful home. 45. Full Floor Monster House A seemingly random occurrence, although sometimes intentional, like the 15th floor of the Fantasy Strait, a monster house occurs when many monsters or Pokémon fall or descend from above into the room and begin to attack the player. The name itself seems a bit odd, although it could be linked back to Pokemon officially being pocket monsters, but it seems like the rescue team members call this occurrence a monster house and game, despite referring to themselves as Pokemon. Have they adopted the now colloquial term of Pokemon or pocket monsters from humans and utilize it here? Are Pokemon considered more civilized, and those that would attack their fellows are the unbridled monsters? Additionally, where do the Pokemon and the monster house come from? We see them descend from the ceiling or an area up above. What are they doing here? A. They are a band of thieves or other criminal Pokemon that have band together and now lie in ambush, thinking they have numbers on their side in the hopes of robbing any passerby. 
Perhaps they react more harshly, knowing that they are a rescue team and wish to deter other teams from discovering their location or curb their criminal activities. Perhaps the Pokemon walking around the floor normally are scouts. B. They are hired or otherwise controlled by Darkrai, the Unseen Force, or some other entity that is not currently known. They either lie in wait or are teleported down in an attempt to thwart the team and its advances. C. Similar to the Manetric and Luxray tribes, they have similarly banded together to protect their home, now in ruinous disarray. They spot you, clearly out of place Pokemon or carrying equipment not seen in the area, so they perceive you as the interlopers, the trespassers, and seek to expel you from their home, lest you loot or pillage the other denizens that are already in shambles. 46. Darkrai encourages the player to kill themselves. Darkrai, disguised as Cresselia, blames and begins convincing the player that the reasons distortions and nightmares are occurring and continuing, threatening the safety of everyone in the Pokemon world, is due to them being from the future and that they should not exist in this world. Upon encountering this Cresselia, who restates this perceived fact and tries to kill them, the player character seems confused and almost resigned to their fate and that, yes, Maybe they should be destroyed and no longer exist for the safety of everyone else in this world. This is particularly dark for a Pokemon game, outside of dex entries, and shows the true manipulative tendencies of Darkrai, tormenting children in their nightmares, slowly convincing someone that if they cared about their friends and loved ones and the safety of the world as they knew it, how selfish they are to continue living, to continue being, robbing the lives of everyone else by their very existence. 47. Munchlax in Red and Blue Similar to Bonsly, Lucario, and Weavile, Munchlax, a fellow Gen 4 Pokemon, was similarly teased as a rare event and by way of its sprite and Red and Blue rescue team. Munchlax has graphics and dialogue assigned to it and are used for various game mechanics, but it can't be actually fought or recruited by any means. Thus, all its data goes relatively unused. They can be used as the main character by using specific cheat codes. Additionally, Munchlax is noted for having the following explanation for its intended use in the game. Part of its animations are used for two side story events, which occur randomly after the main story is finished. Its dungeon dialogue is used for Pokemon escorted in missions. The unused assets of Munchlax, despite being relatively ready to use in game, seems odd. Did the creators think it was too soon or improper to tease or reveal such a Pokemon outside of the main games? In universe, could the Munchlax be a Pokemon that simply hasn't existed on this continent? or, to put it another way, has not become an invasive species on this continent. Snorlax exists, but, at this time, Munchlax do not, or are, otherwise, on a separate continent. Perhaps Munchlax is a spontaneous evolution that has yet to occur, its form taking shape in the genetic composition of a Snorlax. 48. Triple Chestnut A small tree of Mankeys will start construction on and remodel your house in the Red, Blue, and DX games. From start to completion, it will take three chestnuts after the initial encounter and use three in-game working days for them to reach completion, from your point of view at least. The repeated number threes has a numerical meaning. Some fans have speculated that there is something unique about these three numbers, three Mankeys, three chestnuts after it begins, and three days or minimum trips to acquire new ones. Three, three, three. This number has many meanings and associations and is, quote, a signal that your path ahead is clear for moving forward. The 333 angel number indicates that despite your fears, anxieties, mislaid plans, or wrong turns, you're on the right path, end quote. This could be interpreted as, after overcoming so many trials and with the completion of your base, you are on the right path as a rescue team and are set up for a very bright and successful future. Further, according to numerology, it is, quote, an angel number that implies forces at work are in your life. Numbers allow angels to communicate as our guardian to provide guidance and encouragement during times when we are down, end quote. Thus, 
Gardevoir, a potential angel and Pokemon of a seemingly spiritual form and higher power, is no longer guiding you. In fact, whatever special or divine forces were at work throughout your journey are no longer in play, and the player must now subsist upon their own merits. 49. Blue would delete GBA save files. In the original Red and Blue Rescue Teams, the Blue Rescue Team would delete Game Boy Advance save files, causing players to lose all of their progress on their inserted Game Boy Advance game on a DS. The Nintendo DS has a slot for a DS cartridge, as well as one for a Game Boy Advance cartridge. With the DS games usually able to pull data and interact with compatible Game Boy Advance games. While Red Rescue Team debuted on the Game Boy Advance, Blue Rescue Team debuted as a DS cartridge. The general premise that, if both Blue and Red games were inserted, a special mission to aid the other would commence. However, for the initial copies released in Japan, if Blue Rescue Team was inserted, it would check to see if the inserted GBA game was Red Rescue Team. If it was not its red counterpart, it would delete the save data for the inserted Game Boy Advance game. Of course, the game was recalled, with players' cartridges being replaced with new, patched ones that would not delete other Game Boy Advance's game files. This was also patched for its international release. These bugs, or cheats, corrupt and distort the reality of the world, breaking into new ones, and effectively ending multi-dimensional realities, as Darkrai would attempt to do in later iterations of the series. 50. Purple Kecleon is dead in Super. The purple, shiny Kecleon, and brother to the other Kecleon store owner, is dead in Super Mystery Dungeon. While Team Skull live, as a result of the timeline they are on and the events that occurred, the purple Kecleon is similarly dead. From the Kecleon shop in Super, it seems like it only has space for one Kecleon, suggesting that either the purple brother has been dead for a while, or he never existed at all, and the modeling and architecture reflects that. 51. Talking to Spinda as Ho-Oh in Red and Blue, you will receive special dialogue from Spinda when speaking to him as Ho-Oh. He will faint, express joy, speak about never giving up, and will decide to continue his adventures. It is assumed, from this specific encounter, that Spinda will go on to open Spinda's Cafe in Sky. The Pokemon Black and White Pokedex entry for Ho-Oh reads, it possesses seven colored wings. It is said that those who see Ho-Oh are promised eternal happiness. Could this be what happens to Spinda, filling him with happiness and determination so as to fulfill his dreams? Ho-Oh, as per many theories, is believed to grant wishes. Perhaps Spinda's cafe and facilitating a place for explorers is just a fulfillment of that wish brought on by that encounter. If Ho-Oh's presence and feathers are so powerful, could they not be used to transform mean or evil Pokemon toward the light? Or are there limitations to its powers? 52. Unknown Dungeon The Unknown Dungeon is a feature unique to Pokemon Blue Rescue Team. It is also referred to as Tag Mode, and it is a wireless feature that can be activated from the main menu. The option is unlocked once Magnemite is recruited after clearing Mount Steel. When two players of the same language and region have this mode on and are close enough to each other, their current leader will go into the dungeon while the system is closed. Unlike other dungeons, these dungeons are completed off-screen without player input. Their Pokémon will befriend each other and will bring back an item from each dungeon explored. Some of these items are otherwise unobtainable. The unknown dungeon can be repeated an unlimited number of times. In-universe, what happens to the player character? Are we merely vestigial hosts, controlling the player character as they and the world await in limbo for our input? The unknown dungeons being a respite where similarly trapped characters meet, the items received being an offering to encourage further time off for the Pokémon. 53. Accuracy and Crit Rate Based on Gender In the Explorers games, a player's gender directly correlates to in-universe stats. Males have a higher critical hit rate, and females feature a higher evasion rate. 
Does this cater to more of the sexual dimorphism that began appearing in later iterations of the series, such as female Pikachu having a heart-shaped tail? Prior to this, it seemed as if it was only aesthetics-based, but, like real-world animal counterparts, the sexual dimorphism seems to impact their physiology. Or perhaps it has an impact on how other Pokémon interact with them. Additionally, almost all Pokémon in odd-numbered floors are male, and almost all Pokémon in even-numbered floors are female. The exception appears to be genderless and single-gendered only Pokémon species, who can show up in both even and odd floors. 54. Blue and Red Debug Room In the Red and Blue Rescue Team games, a debug room with various assets can be found by inputting cheat codes. Once inside, there are many Pokémon NPCs that can be used to test various game functions. The surrounding graphics lack details and use few colors, akin to Game Boy color palettes, and are completely unused during normal play. The cloud shadows moving on the map and the background music are the same as the ones used for Pokémon Square. Despite the presence of many roads and doors, there are no warp points programmed. While there is a mailbox and two of the Pelipper can be utilized like their counterparts in the main Pelipper post office, Speaking to the third Pelipper will result in the game crashing. Various other interactions will similarly elicit unused animations or game freezes. By leaving this code and play area in the game's code, it effectively becomes a separate reality all its own. Could we not envision this as one of Arceus's creation playgrounds, honing the inner workings of the world he creates? Is Arceus truly omnipotent and able to create the Pokémon in town the player will come to in such a way that it perfectly molds it to his plan of the world's salvation? Are each of the save files and games host to their own Arceus, selecting and preparing what they have believed to be the perfect savior? Level 5, Lower Half 55. Dugtrio as a neglectful father, Dugtrio attempted to kill himself. Dugtrio, the father of Diglett, is often not seen with him outside of the post office. There are many days where Diglett is seen alone, as Dugtrio, at one point, disappeared before the Groudon fight and reappeared after Rayquaza is beaten, apparently after two in-game days. Toward the beginning of Red and Blue, Diglett roams about unsupervised, digging holes and ultimately apologizes to the player for tearing up the earth around their home the hole and tunnel he dug still being quite visible. Where is his parental supervision? Diglett later says, Papa hasn't come back yet. I wonder what happened to them. He apparently went exploring, returning to say, the world is vast and that there are countless unknown Pokemon out there. Why would he leave him without saying something else? Or maybe he just went to the Kecleon shop to get an apple and took a while to come back. In the Explorers games, this Dugtrio Diglett father-son pairing features similar motifs, and in this time he apparently went to the sea. Dugtrio, being a ground-type Pokémon, would be at a horrible disadvantage in such an area. Not to mention, the ground in such dungeons seems to have a layer of water that, while not deep enough to impede the player, must still be sloshed through to get around. If so, how would Dugtrio traverse this? Would he constantly pop up through the ground, through the layer of water, gasping for air? The theory suggests that this was all an act to kill himself by directly placing himself in immediate, life-threatening danger so that it would seem a tragic accident and not intentional on his part. What would drive him to do this? Diglett's mother is never seen or mentioned by anyone, so it can be assumed that she died, the means of which are likewise unknown. Could the emotional stress of losing the love of his life be what is pushing Dugtrio to end his own, to erase the heart-wrenching pain and see her again in the Pokémon afterlife that we know exists, as evidenced by the many ghost and ghost-type Pokémon in the series? Going back to what Diglett said in the Red and Blue games, he said them when referring to his father as, after all, Dugtrio is made up of seemingly three sentient heads. Could one of the heads in this iteration have taken control or otherwise sabotaged the others? However, perhaps overcoming this or thinking about his son, he endeavors to struggle on. It is interesting that, 
across both Red and Blue and the Explorer games that Dugtrio would be noticeably absent from his son's life again and again. Is this the same pair? Or a trait shared among all Dugtrio? Or something worse? 56. Korean Gold Version Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gold Rescue Team was a free PC demo of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. It could be downloaded by players who registered an account on the official Korean Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Special Players site. The demo was released exclusively in South Korea on August 11, 2007. The demo contains gameplay from the first part of Blue Rescue Team, up through encountering Zatu at the Great Canyon. As the demo required a connection to an online server to function, it can no longer be played. Despite being advertised by Nintendo of Korea, it does not seem like its files have been saved in any capacity, despite fans trying to uncover and mod it to make it playable once more. Red and Blue have the DS Linked Share compatibility from their respective Game Boy and DS cartridges. Could this PC version have been a way to open the door to stronger online communication and playability? 57. Human Ghost, Gengar is Dead it is known that Gengar from Red and Blue was also a human before appearing in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world. His Pokemon, Gardevoir, absorbed the curse intended for her trainer. Perhaps while shielding him from some of its effects, they still bled out into him. A. In an attempt to save him, Gardevoir transformed him into a Pokemon akin to the player character and brought him to the Pokemon world for his safety. It is noted that she supposedly used all of her power to shield him from the curse. B. The trainer still died, either from the curse or natural causes. We know that Pokemon, like Phantump, are the ghosts of deceased human children, and Yamask hold the faces of who they were in their past life. So why can't Gengar be the deceased forms of a grown human? Without any other actual humans seen in this world, how would Gengar have gotten there? Once again, thanks to Gardevoir, he was teleported to the safety of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world upon his death and reincarnation. Its Pokédex entry states that, to protect its trainer, it will expend all of its psychic power to create a small black hole. Perhaps that black hole was able to transport its trainer, similarly causing him to turn into a Gengar. C. Perhaps Gengar is based on the Japanese Yurei, a spirit that died and enters a form of purgatory his form as a Pokemon and his placement in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world. A Yurei is created and influenced by, quote, powerful emotions such as a desire for revenge, love, jealousy, hatred, or sorrow, which we see in how Gengar takes credit for others' accomplishments and for his insistence to put down others, like the main character, but also in the seeming regret and running off to cry as he enters the player's dream, hearing Gardevoir and how she does not hate her trainer or friend that she still remembers. As a Yurei, he would persist, unable to move on, until the conflict that produced him is resolved. After helping the player in breaking the curse on Gardevoir, Gengar is never seen again. From this, it is possible that his spirit, now free, was able to move on. 58. Nightmare Pokemon Upon being teleported by Drowsy into Azuril's nightmare, the player finds themselves in another dungeon, similarly besieged by Pokemon. These nightmare Pokemon raise a few questions. Are they sentient? Do they work for Darkrai? How is Drowsy even able to put you in the literal dreams of another Pokemon in the first place? Perhaps the nightmare Pokemon are mindless constructs, created by Darkrai in this realm, veritable phantoms set to attack anything they see. A little darker, but what if, like the girl in the strange house of Pokemon Black and White, they died in the nightmares created by Darkrai? Upon their death, Darkrai is able to fully control their minds and spirits, adding them to his collection to torment others and bring them into the fold. Are they constantly killed and reborn, or remaining dormant in Darkrai's own mind between dreams? After all, when a Pokemon wakes and the dream is no longer active, where could they go? And upon their defeat, what happens to them? If they are created, are they simply mindless or actually sentient, now facing the darkness of the afterlife? 
if they are kindred souls enslaved to Darkrai, are they now finally free? Another theory is that the Nightmare Dungeon is an actual place that Darkrai transports his victims to. 59. Meryl and Azuril's mother never survived. After their mother became ill, Meryl and Azuril took up completing tasks for her. In the postgame, Azuril is besieged by a never-ending nightmare from Darkrai, and Meryl brings him to the player. Is their mother so ill that she is unable to help or at least stand by her ailing child's side? She is never seen. Not when Azuril is kidnapped and not here. Simply put, she is either so ill that she is incapable of moving from her bed, nest, or she is now dead. One theory suggests that the imbalances brought on by the distortion of time and space have somehow impacted their mother, Azuril's health. Pokemon in dungeons seem aggressive or otherwise impacted, so why not for Azumarill? The children, now orphaned, must make their own way in the world. 60. Time Gears in Blue and Red's Code Quote, Time Gears, end quote, appear in the original Red and Blue Rescue Team games. Why don't any Pokemon talk about them? Perhaps on this continent, they are so well hidden that they have fallen deeper into obscurity. Or, as the Pokemon have no true knowledge of Generation 4 Pokemon, save for Lucario and a few of his constituents, they are unaware of these relics' importance. Other implications could be that they are just not found on the continent in which these stories take place. This could suggest that they reside solely on the grass continent, where the ties and ley lines under Dialga's jurisdiction are most powerful. Each time Gear's disappearance ripples out, reaching the hapless other continents and homes of unaware Pokémon. Could they have been put there? A potential side story that would ultimately be held back and then later formed into the overarching story for its successors, the Explorers games. 61. Spatial Rift Temporal Tower. The Spatial Rift is a dungeon the player and their partner are dragged into by Palkia, who accuses them of distorting space without his permission, as he is convinced of this by Darkrai, posing as Cresselia. Palkia literally brings them to a rift in the very fabric of space. There is no escape, save through him. Not only ghost or psychic Pokemon can be encountered here, as they might be able to harness their powers to traverse such a plane. How would Pokemon like Tropius or Charizard arrive at such a place? Have they been similarly sucked into this place from which they are unable to escape, fearful and fighting to stay alive? Are all of these Pokemon brought here like some sort of spatial jail over which Palkia presides, similar to the Timekeepers in Loki? When a Pokemon breaks or distorts what is meant to be or to exist in a time, Palkia is there to rectify it. Some Pokemon, such as psychic or ghost types by their inherent powers, are more likely to cause such breaches in reality, hence their placement here. On the other end of the spectrum sits the Temporal Tower, the seat from which Dialga, the Pokemon of Time, governs, and a land only reached by defying the laws of reality as Lapras flies, abandoning the water behind them in order to reach this mystical land. Again, this dungeon seems to be populated predominantly by psychic-type Pokémon. Are they prisoners or guardians? An unknown order set to defend the realms of time and space. 62. Kecleon can attack dungeon Pokémon. As previously mentioned, if a dungeon Pokémon accidentally picks up an item from the Kecleon shop and leaves with it, they will be attacked by the Kecleon shopkeeper for stealing. Kecleon always seems chipper and happy when you make purchases from him, and the player seems to have a decent rapport with him in town. So why then does he simply ignore you when you are attacked by these dungeon Pokemon in front of him? Given his strength, he could easily save you, most likely obliterating most Pokemon throughout the main storyline. Why watch two young Pokemon getting attacked, fainting at times in front of him while he unflinchingly observes? Perhaps, in order to run his business in the dungeons, he has made a deal that he will continue to supply them with medicine, foods, and goods as long as Pokemon do not steal from him, and he himself is not attacked. It is not a matter of him wanting or not wanting to help you, but that he and his livelihood is precariously balanced upon such rules of engagement. I'm 
the other hand, he could care little for others. Safety and well-being, simply being a charming businessman after the only true thing he cares about. The good pokey. 63. 69 Makuhita Floors, Dojo Registration Dungeon. Like similar dungeons that cannot be normally accessed in-game, there exists a 69-floor dungeon known as the Dojo Registration and Red and Blue Rescue Team. Countless theories and rumors about its use, requirements, and encounters have been the subject of a fair amount of debate. It is most likely a leftover dungeon that was never fully finished and implemented into the game, whether due to time constraints or lore implications. After each floor and before progressing to the next, you must defeat another rescue team. Allegedly, to unlock the dojo, you must be level 100, you must be Lucario rank, you must have access to all dungeons, you must have recruited all the legendaries, plus Chansey, you must have completed all the Makuhita dojo dungeons. After its completion, you should be able to meet the legendary Lucario in Pokemon Square, and there may be a chance to recruit him, here or in the dungeon supposedly. Given how many rescue teams appear in the dungeon, we finally get to see how many potentially active teams there are in the world. Why don't we see more of them throughout the main game? Is this a gauntlet that all rescue teams try to compete in, pitting them against one another for bragging rights or to better themselves overall? Seeing as it was effectively complete, why wasn't it promoted or otherwise implemented into the games? 64. Second map in red-blue base, continent similarities. In red and blue inside the player's base, a second map can be seen on one of the walls. Some have speculated that this is not the air continent that you are on, but a nod to the next continent, the grass continent of explorers. In particular, the formation of the island in the bottom left looks more akin to the grass continents than the airs. However, looking more on the right side of the map to its indentations and cookie-cutter outlines, it more closely mimics the native air continent. Honestly, despite being separate continents, the pair do look eerily similar when it comes to island versus landmass placement. One small example of this is with the similar geographical placement of the Air Continent Sky Tower being in the equivalent location of the Temporal Tower of the Grass Continent. We know that legendary Pokemon can cause fissures, create land, cover it in water, or anything in between. What if, instead of Earth's Pangaea that spread apart over a Meganum, the continents of the Pokemon world were formed and torn apart by legendary Pokemon? Each continent is, generally, host to its own legendary Pokemon and Pokemon native to that particular region. By the legendaries carving up the land to cultivate in their own domains, this is how we begin to see branching evolutionary lines. And not simply Alolan, Galarian, or other forms. This could predate from which certain dog or canine Pokemon like Rowlith, Rockruff, Houndour, Poochyanna, Lillipup, Snubble, or Furfro shared a common ancestor that they deviated from in their new, isolated environments. The Galarian forms in such appear much later after reintroduction of now very different species. 65. Kecleon's Raid Dungeons to Supply Shops one theory suggests that Kecleon actually delve into dungeons in order to pillage materials and supply shops. While one could argue that the berries and seeds could be grown naturally in the environment, what about the TMs and orbs? Were they dropped by a fainted or killed Pokemon, abandoned when the owner escaped to save their own lives, etc.? The Kecleon essentially go into people's homes, stealing their worldly possessions, and then sell them for a premium to make some pokey, just like you. Sometimes on the ground or after defeating enemies, a pretty box or some other treasure chest is found, which can later be pried open after leaving the dungeon. Again, are all Pokemon in these dungeons thieves that we are stealing back from, or is that a scared Pokemon lashing out and we have now stolen their valuables in their lockbox, prying it open like petty criminals ourselves upon our return to town? 66. Skipping Dinner Cutscene Wigglytuff's true power. After Team Skull steals all the perfect apples and you return empty-handed, Chatot says you will not have dinner that night. When your partner tries to explain what Skunk Tank did, they are ultimately shut down. So, one would assume, you would go straight to bed and that would be the end of it. No. 
you and your hungry partner are forced to watch as everyone else chows down. A little cruel. However, the cutscene shifts to Wigglytuff after this, wherein Chatot reports that they have absolutely no perfect apples left, and his reaction is terrifying. He initially starts to sniffle and sob, and then the camera shakes. The sounds of clattering and destruction is heard all around them, as if Wigglytuff was holding in or was about to release a massive, destructive, concussive blast. Your partner comments that the whole place is shaking, as in the entire underground base of earth and stone carved into a cliff. Chadat says they must cover their ears as a high-pitched whine sounds with Wigglytuff's peeling voice, small fire explosions appearing about the room. As suddenly as it started, everything is stopped and the happy note resumes the moment Skuntang interrupts, calling that he is delivering a perfect apple. Now, Wigglytuff returns to his happy, delighted persona and everything returns to normal. When Team Skull try to attack Wigglytuff later on, he flattens them easily. Chadot outright fears his wrath and his backstory even as an Igglybuff all marvel at how carefree he is despite his power. When he doesn't get his apple and starts to sniffle and cry, the very earth shakes and small explosions form about him. Simply put, the moment Wigglytuff is not happy, unspeakable, world-shattering destruction happens all because he is sad. This is why Wigglytuff is always happy. Anything less <laughs> leads to chaos. The question is, is he actually in control of this? Is he a host by way of curse or something unspeakable to untold power as a child? When he is scared, mad, or upset, is his true power unable to be held back? Or does he have complete control of it? He expresses his power when displeased and upon a whim, defeating Team Skull or showing his displeasure at not receiving his favorite treat so that no one fails him again. He is the one that, at times, appears in the dimensional screens, showing them secret buttons or events, and plays along happily, never divulging anything outright. Could he be Arceus? He knows of the Hidden Land and is, generally, unconcerned and just happy to frolic amongst his own creations. He is fairly knowledgeable and calm about most major events that we see and experience throughout the game. Despite facing the end of time and space, he seems relatively calm. Why? Because he knows what will happen due to his omniscience, but does not interfere. His friends will be fine and life will continue on. Or he knows that he will be unharmed able to flee beyond this timeline, should it come to that. Perhaps he is a young Arceus, wishing to live amongst his creation, playing out one of their simple lives, being charmed by those he meets, and playing with the idea of life itself. 67. Explorers of Death This is a popular creepypasta based on the series and modeled after Sky. In this story, the player in real life breaks the bounds and world of the game as, by taking the personality test, she got the bold type Squirtle. She kept resetting, trying to change reality to be someone or something she wasn't, fighting through static, following guides, and still getting Squirtle until she finally got her desired Vulpix. However, there was a definite cost as she was trying to escape her true form. The world was gray. Everyone had fled to a dungeon, save for your discolored partner, Bidoof, and a bisected, bleeding Wigglytuff that dragged itself around with its front paws at alarming speeds. As Grovile says in the dungeon, the player just had to keep resetting the timeline, distorting it from what it should be to what she wanted it to be. The antagonist, the one ruling over this world and calling for the Imposter, or Vulpix's death, is a deranged, mutilated Squirtle, the one whose life, whose destiny was taken from her. She should be the hero, not her. How many potential worlds, how many lives are altered by the very reality of resetting a game, fudging the quiz, and lying at the true essence of what exists in the Pokemon world? 
68, Voice of Life in Red Blue, and Darkness, Time, and Sky. While Gates to Infinity strongly alludes to High Dragon being the Voice of Life, or at least, the form chosen by the Voice of Life in this game, what about in Red and Blue or the Explorers series? Xerneas, however, is known as the Being of Life and is the Tree of Life, so shouldn't it theoretically be the actual Voice of Life? Perhaps the Voice of Life or Voices of Life are an enforcement team under Xerneas, with each given a portion of its power and are responsible for overseeing their respective continents while Xerneas slumbers. In Red and Blue, Gardevoir seems to mention that Council and how the player was chosen. The Rainbow Aura at the beginning of the game could be the voice of life choosing its own hero. In Explorers, what about Wigglytuff? He seems to have unexplained powers, he seems fairly omniscient to the world around him, and he inadvertently guides the life of the player through various dimensional screams and events. Like Hydreigon, a different form was chosen. Both Gardevoir and Wigglytuff seem to know far more than they let on at a time, and act as direct or indirectly guiding forces along the player's journey. Perhaps they cannot impact the world to such a degree themselves, but must guide and mold others. This could also explain why Team Charm, who is host to Gardevoir, seems so chummy with Wigglytuff. Perhaps those two, or all of them, are part of the voices of life. 69. Temporal Tower, Tree of Life Paradox Let's break down some aspects of each first. Temporal Tower. One must ask, what is the function of the Temporal Tower itself? Is it simply the home of Dialga, or is it pertinent to keeping time running and honing his powers? As we see when the Time Gear was removed from Tree Shroud Forest and was unable to restore time from simply being put back. Perhaps they must be specifically placed and imbued with Dialga's power, and their existence acts as a failsafe that time would continue on should Temporal Tower eventually fall for any reason. On the other hand, bringing five Time Gears to Temporal Tower is able to restore time to those areas. Perhaps the stopping of time would have continued, but at a markedly slower pace if the Time Gears remained where they were instead of being placed into Temporal Tower leading to the dark future we see regardless of this. Could Darkrai have removed and hidden the Time Gears at different locales throughout history to begin a slow destabilization process? To the other Pokemon, they have always been there. The Tree of Life. Because the Tree of Life is allowed to flourish and grow, what is a world without it or with it being destroyed by dark matter, which almost occurred in Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon? Going again by the idea of duality, the Tree of Life can exist only because its antithesis, death and the absence of life exists. The imbalance of either leads to the ruin of all. Now, the dark future, or where the temporal tower is in ruins, and the Tree of Life cannot exist at the same time as they cancel out one another in a paradox. If the planet was to be paralyzed and all plant life were to be killed or otherwise stalled, the tree of life would be dead and the planet would be destroyed. Nothing grows, yet nothing seems to die. Life is halted and placed into a purgatory. If one were to travel further into this dark future, would all life, legendary or not, cease to exist? 70. Ghost types can possess bodies. In Grovile's special episode in Sky, Duskenor attempts to use the current from icicle pillars that will kill Grovile by effectively erasing his spirit from his body, leaving only a husk. Duskenor then says he will possess that corpse and use it to trick the protagonists, pretending to be Grovile. In the anime, we've seen psychic-type Pokémon like Mewtwo control the mind of a human, i.e. Nurse Joy, but never a soulless husk. What of Dusknor's body? Does it go into a comatose state until his return, or, being a ghost type, does it cease to age and he can re-enter it upon his return? Could someone else take over his body? And how many Pokemon has he done this to before? 71. Judgment in Sky's Code The move, Judgment, is possible to get in Sky. When hacked in, its name will be money sign, money sign, money sign, and it will have 7 PP. 
Using it causes a black orb to appear over the Pokemon and white lines to cover the area, inflicting damage on every enemy Pokemon currently in the room. This is Arceus' signature move, possibly meaning that Arceus was meant to be obtainable at one point instead of being a statue at the top of Destiny Tower. Since the plates do not exist in the game, the move instead uses primary type of the user. In some codes, its form and portrait of Arceus are those of Bulbasaur, showing how he really is number one. Honestly, though, the fact that some of Arceus's coded data exists, but not fully, could have a few implications. A. No Arceus or god exists in this timeline, whether from crossing to another reality or ceasing to exist, the Pokémon of this world having been abandoned. B. Going back to a previous notion, Arceus has taken the form of Wigglytuff, so that is why he does not appear. As for him looking akin to a Bulbasaur in this, this could, potentially, strengthen this idea as the god Pokemon being able to transform and exist alongside others, the devastating moves and powers unseen for the time being. Their god now walks amongst them. Or, by cheating and breaking the game's code, a false god has been created and imposed upon the world. 72. Demo Dungeons Various demo dungeons accessible only in the demo of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky sent via DS Download Play through Nintendo Channel on the Wii and via DS Download Play through the demo dungeon feature on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. The player controls Torchic, while their partner Pokemon is Bulbasaur. As in every demo dungeon, all Pokemon are male, including the player and partner. The demo dungeons, like Trial Forest, never actually appear in the game. These dungeons clearly exist outside of the bounds of existence in the Mystery Dungeon world, and the fact that females, specifically, do not exist in these pockets of reality is troubling, as if this pocket reality was created with no means of reproduction in existence, as all the Pokémon would age and die, effectively ending sentient life therein. 73. Planetary Investigation League countless deaths. In the Grovile special episode, Grovile mentions a planetary investigation team that was tasked with going around and asking Pokemon who haven't lost their minds if they're willing to disappear to save the Pokemon of the past and so that this dark future never occurs. They unanimously agreed, apparently. These Pokemon knew that they would die and never be born in the first place. Would that mean they wouldn't even exist as ghosts or in the afterlife, as it would completely erase them as even the idea of their being or world would never exist? We see this fear in Dusknor, who fights to live and to exist, even at the cost of others as his initial motivations. Although in this episode, he acquiesced, hoping his life was able to shine and save the past. How are you, the player, still able to exist? Again, the idea of selective saving exists, as Palkia or others could have saved everyone else but chose not to, resulting in a complete genocide of all other future Pokémon, including the ones incapable of speaking for themselves. 74. Blue can connect with Pokémon Troze. Similar to being able to connect with the Red Rescue Team, Blue is able to connect with Pokemon Troze. Troze, unlike Red Rescue Team, is not just an alternate world or timeline, but an entirely separate reality and plane of existence, wherein both exist at the same time, with their connectivity to one another, and yet Troze getting prize coins that convert the Troze coins and an item to the other. Do prize coins exist in the Mystery Dungeon universe, or do the items of each change form when crossing the barrier that separates their realities? 75. Event Zukoke. I apologize for the pronunciation. Two additional tracks exist in Red and Blue Rescue Team, entitled Event Zukoke, which can be loosely translated from Japanese to English to mean stupid or foolish. Was this supposed to be used for some silly event wherein a new Pokémon that appears scatterbrained or absent-minded would appear? Again, why was it left out of the game proper, but still left in its files? 76. Dark Matter Collapsed All Timelines Into One 
Dark Matter, which is the main threat in Super Mystery Dungeon as it seeks to destroy the Tree of Life, has collapsed all timelines into one. All variants or Pokémon now exist as one, which explains how Celebi and Grovile of the Dark Future can be seen, Team Skull is still alive, why Chatat refers to Wigglytuff as a she and Wigglytuff has previously been referred to as a he in the past, both male and female timeline counterparts now exist, etc. Are there any negative implications of this? Are only one version of characters like Team Skull's Skuntank canon, and the others are not canon or main timeline and now permanently have been destroyed? 77. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is a black and white AU. A world without humans. This sentiment seems fairly in line with quite a few antagonists throughout the mainline series. What if N got what he wanted and now Pokemon can live free from humans? Albeit now because there are no humans. What happened to them? Have they all been mostly exterminated? Do they exist on another continent? Or do they live in a separate dimension? Additionally, what if the entire Pokemon Mystery Dungeon worlds are simply dreams? Which explains how one can go into a nightmare, why there are potentially loose ends, etc., and it is instead created by a Pokemon within the confines of its mind. The other stories have just been retconned. Level 6. Bottom of the Iceberg 78. Duskinor has murdered multiple Pokemon Without batting an eye, Duskinor attacks Pokemon, working for Primal Dialga and sets about erasing these Pokemon. He's thrown Pokemon in jail, tied them upon pillars, and directed his Sableye minions to eliminate them with their slashing claws. In Grovile's special episode, he brings Grovile to a location where he knows the power from the icicles will erase his spirit, leaving him a husk, showing that he has done this before. He has served Dialga for many years, and the ways in which we see him attempt to eliminate foes is just the tip of the iceberg. Pun intended. 79. Pokemon actively swap body parts. Going back to Krogunk's swap shop in Cauldron, Pokemon body parts are regularly used and exchanged. Each Pokemon has an increasing rarity of item parts. For example, Bulbasaur has items like a Bulbaclaw or Bulbafang, and Vulpix has a Vulpix tail. Are you actively harvesting defeated and killed parts from other Pokemon a la Monster Hunter to accomplish this? Is there a black market or swap cauldron trade for this? And how are Pokemon so casual about holding the vivisected body parts of their fellows? It's like a Baneri holding a severed rabbit's foot about its neck. These items raise the power or stats for these specific Pokemon, so does some elemental power or spirit remain inside them like a soul gem? 80. Physical Copies of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Anime Children of elementary school age or younger who say the password Pokemon ni na cheta to staff will receive a free Pokemon anime DVD featuring the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon anime while DVD stocks last. This campaign began on March 19th, 2020. 81. Corsola Twig, Cacnea Spike Another example of dead Pokemon parts is the Corsola Twig. It says, when hurled, it flies in a straight line to damage any enemy it hits. This rare item makes you feel like Corsola. Of course, these are the remnants of the living coral Pokemon Corsola. Similarly, Cacnea Spikes from Cacnea can be similarly hurled. The body parts of other Pokemon can be collected, utilized as a form of throwing knife, and implemented in battle. How far is the Pokemon world away from sharpening the bones of their fellows and fashioning sharpened and elementally strengthened spears or other weapons a human might create? 82. Blue and Red, Time, Darkness, and Sky, Hidden Merch There exists a paltry amount of official Pokemon Mystery Dungeon merchandise, mainly the Explorers of Sky plush toy line from Jocks, the Time and Darkness capsule figures line from Japan, the Explorers guides, the two DVDs and the Japan-only manga are all official merchandise. But only a few of them appear from time to time on eBay and Amazon, mostly just the DVDs or the guides. 
the plushies and other Mystery Dungeon materials have never seen a true reprinting like the various iterations of Pokemon from the main games do in official capacities. As if the Mystery Dungeon games are discounted as an obsolete timeline that deviates from the mainline one. 83. Unused Goodnight Theme An Explorers of Sky and alternate Goodnight theme that was never used can be found. It is relatively upbeat and pleasant, and some fans have postulated that it was going to be used as a goodnight theme after graduating from Wigglytuff's guild. Their features now their own and limitless. 84. USA TV ads for all games. In the first commercial, we get a point of view from a totodile as if you are the Pokemon before seeing yourself and your partner hurrying you along. Note the non-cartoon, slightly more realistic grass and backgrounds that deviate from any known Pokemon style. In these ads, it is stated that you are this Pokemon or you become this Pokemon, which is an interesting word choice. You don't play as a Pokemon or this character, you become one. This further ties into the mechanic where you are chosen from our world, the real world, from the personality quiz that transports your actions or conscious influence into the Pokemon world. You are not just inhabiting a slightly customizable trainer at the beginning of a mainline game. This is your subconscious form. The later game's ability to choose who you are shows a cognizant deviation wherein you have more agency or control to select who you identify as, even if that seemingly goes against your innate nature. 85. Blue and Red Carrying Case The unique red and blue carrying cases for the original games contained a switch and carry system, a mini pack and bag rag, system wrap stickers, and three game cases with character labels. With items to customize your console, carry it safely, and bring it with you, it really tapped into the DS's past feature for the unknown dungeon and encouraged players to share and interact with other heroes, joining their rescue missions. 86. The Stockade is Magnazone's Jail the player, their partner, and Grovile are thrown into the jail the dark feature and are then taken to the stockade to be formally executed. Magnazone, the chief police officer, similarly takes criminals to jail and, it's implied, a stockade. From this, it's very unlikely that these Pokemon stand trial or are otherwise rehabilitated. With the exception of Drowsy, who is allowed to make up for his ill deeds by helping Azuril, we don't see any other instances of this. Magnazone most likely executes the criminal Pokemon, perhaps by way of electrocution, while other Pokemon and dungeons are killed and harvested for parts. Is being brought in, trapped, and awaiting your inevitable death a better way to go than dying in a dungeon on the field of battle where you have a chance, a hope, a freedom? 87. Zatu's silence caused by foreseeing player's departure. The reason Zatu remains silent, not divulging the eventual fate and parting of the player, is due to him seeing the player's departure from this world. He may be able to foresee that, should the player know of this departure prior to this, he or she would lose their resolve, not wanting to return to the human world, and it would culminate in the world being destroyed anyway. Additionally, would the player pull away from their partner and the friends that they made in this world and attempt to distance themselves emotionally from what is to come, thus weakening their unity and teamwork in battle, which would additionally result in their failure? 88. Increased Recruit Rates in Sky with Personality Quiz In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, if the player answers yes to having already played Time and Darkness, the base recruitment rate for over 160 Pokemon is doubled. In addition to this, during the personality quiz itself, the player is more likely to get one of the new Pokemon not seen as a player Pokemon from Time and Darkness. What causes this? In universe, you are acknowledging that you played and are aware of the story from Time and Darkness, which is very much the same mainline story for Sky, save for some new inclusions, special episodes, and the like. You are effectively acknowledging that you are coming back to do the same thing, to live another life with another partner, and to save the world from the same events. This is why you can befriend certain Pokemon easier. 
you're more familiar with the world and are better able to connect with the Pokémon within it. But why are you redoing this adventure? Perhaps because the correct events did not occur, allowing for Darkrai to not be stopped and he once again went back in time and started the entire process over once more in an infinite loop. In other words, Darkrai effectively reset all the work that you did in Time and Darkness games, and now by defeating him in Sky, you have your chance to rectify this and defeat him once and for all. 89. All Dungeon Pokémon are Kecleon Disregarding some previous theories, why do a bunch of seemingly deranged or criminal Pokémon care if the Kecleon shop is robbed? All Pokémon, including Kecleon, come after you when you rob them. Why? Simply put, they are all Kecleon, but in disguise from its chameleon-based form. Kecleon's color change could allow it to be other Pokémon types, which accounts for type advantages and such, and they have a monopoly on trade and TMs, so it wouldn't be hard to learn various moves. This could also explain why they do not attack their fellow Kecleon shopkeepers, and why the shopkeepers do not help you when you are being attacked right in front of them. The only time they do so is if one of these Kecleon steals from them, a true act of betrayal by their own kind. Why are they attacking you? Are they under the control of Darkrai or other forces, or have they been quietly multiplying, orchestrating attacks, and allowing other Pokémon to take the blame as they pillage dungeons and items from their denizens in the confusion? 90. RNG Manipulation In the newest game, DX, in order to manipulate the recruitment RNG, you're going to need Nintendo Online. When you encounter a Pokémon you want, such as a Shiny, and you're all prepared with your friend bow plus whatever else you may need to help the process, exit the game. Close out of it completely and back up the save file to the cloud. Go back into your save file and play the rest like normal. If you recruit the Shiny, fantastic! If it fails to recruit once more, repeat the process and you should be right back where you were prior to engaging battle with the Shiny. However, in order to progress or otherwise alter the RNG after reloading it each time, you must progress it, such as making it faint from a different attack move, or you can otherwise progress it by simply speaking to your partner and exchanging that dialogue as a form of anchor point, if you will. 91. The player in blue and red is manipulated into staying. Because the protagonists never regained their memories, their choice was either to return to a human world that they knew nothing about, or to remain in the Pokémon world. In other words, the player can choose between the friendships that they know and have grown, or return. In Red, Blue, and DX, Gardevoir notes that the player was aware of this, thus would be able to make stronger connections with the Pokémon met and fight for the only world they knew. If they return to their human form, will they remember any of their journey here? Or would their memory be wiped once more? The irreplaceable friend, partner, a mere ghost of a memory. In addition to this, at the start of the game, you also can't refuse to join a mystery team with your partner in red and blue, even though you seemingly get the choice. For various parts of the game, it seems like the player is strong-armed, despite being given the illusion of choice into what the partner or mystery dungeon world wants or requires. Level 7, Under the Iceberg, 92, Playable State, DX With the remastered Pokémon DX, the game has quite a few errors or game-breaking glitches. A. For one glitch to occur, you have to be in a dungeon where your starter and partner are required and have a third-party member with you, such as Absol. If both your starter and partner dies, and you then remove the last Pokémon from the team or dismiss them, the glitch will happen. This can either be done through the menu or when recruiting enemy Pokémon, so look out for both. It gives you an error that makes you unable to continue playing, and the game's autosave feature means that rebooting has no effect on it. You will simply get the same error again when you restart the game. In other words, your save file becomes unreadable and you will be forced to start the game all over again. B. Some players were experiencing pre-patch problems that resulted after someone would rescue or aid them after being defeated in battle and the software was closed because an error occurred. Reportedly, this could happen various times throughout the entire adventure. C. 
one glitch that I personally experienced in DX was, upon racing toward the job board, I completely phased through it. While I was still able to interact with the job board from behind, I was now trapped by the board and the shrub surrounding me. The only way that I could get out was to go to the game settings and reset my location, warping me back to my base's entrance. What had teleported me, and who was I able to call to reset my location? Was it a psychic type Pokemon's teleport, or was the actual interaction with the options and game settings a means of enacting Arceus' power on this world? In various glitches, the reality of the Pokemon world the player character existed in would become fundamentally corrupted, comatose, and in many cases must be completely destroyed, allowing for it to be rewritten in a new timeline. 93. Where do defeated Pokemon go? Upon defeating an enemy, save for the outlaws that are brought back to be turned in, they seem to flinch and disappear from reality. They do not collapse as a sleeping, fainted form, and they don't seem to be teleported out. Add to this that Pokemon parts, such as the Diglett hat, which, unlike the simple Bulbaclaw, seems to be a hat made out of Diglett by its name, are removed. When the player defeats an enemy, they do not die, or are otherwise teleported away. That's because, when the player defeats an enemy, they do in fact die. Unlike the outlaws, these nameless Pokemon aren't worth the coin to bring in. Perhaps the Pokemon that join your team ask to join as a means of not meeting the same fate as their fellows, groveling for your mercy and longing to be a part of your adventure. 94. Staff Credits, First Floor One unused dungeon in Time and Darkness is that of Staff Credits, First Floor. What would have been found in this dungeon? Would each of the staff appear as their own Pokemon counterparts, or in their human forms? Would this reveal them as the orchestrators of the universe, or of Arceus? 95. Talkie Talkie The seemingly unique responses and interactions the player gets, particularly with bosses or legendary Pokemon, wherein they explain their plans, monologue, or otherwise don't just attack or finish them outright. Zapdos seemed to attack first without warning on the Manetric and Luxray, and they supposedly do it as well. Except they also talk before actually beginning the battle as well. Why give up the element of surprise or even try to debate with the one that you believe is ruinous to the world's existence? For some of the more heinous Pokémon, like Darkrai or Frostlass who encase Scizor in ice, why speak at all? Perhaps there is an unseen force that compels them to speak, to divulge, and to listen to the player and partner specifically. Is it an ability of the player or something else? In most cases, while we occasionally read the player's thoughts, they don't normally actively contribute to conversations, instead allowing their partner to do so for them. The games are known for being very talky or dialogue heavy, a bit odd for seeming animals, despite their intelligence. 96. The protagonist of Time, Darkness, and Sky is Darkrai, or Wigglytuff is Darkrai. Once Darkrai is defeated in Time, Darkness, and Sky, he flees into a dimensional hole, wherein it is explained that he loses his memories just like the player, since Palkia attacked him. What happened to him? A. One theory states that Wigglytuff is Darkrai, reborn after the endgame events. After the end of the game, Darkrai time travels and is hit with an attack at the same time, which is the exact scenario that turned the player character from a human into a Pokemon. By that logic, it should be possible for a Pokemon to turn into another Pokemon. After all, what's a human but a weak, normal-type Pokemon? What if Darkrai was hit with amnesia and turned into an Igglybuff, wherein he was found and adopted by his parents? A completely blank slate, he acts consistently childish and immature, but is also extremely powerful for no apparent reason. Did Wigglytuff, by some unknown coercion or regret, seek out and find the fragment only to plant it somewhere for the partner to find? B. Darkrai went through the portal and came out the other side into the past in a different timeline as a human with no memories, except for the player's name, which becomes his own. There, he meets Grovile, and the two become close friends. 
During this time, the Darkrai living in that time period senses the power in the human, which is literally his own power, but not realizing this. Out of fear, this Darkrai sabotages Primal Tower, bringing the future of darkness to prevent the human from threatening Darkrai's existence. This is where the events begin to connect to the main plot, as the human and Grovile travel back in time to recover the Time Gears. You, the player, are Darkrai from another timeline. The dimensional scream can also be explained by this. As Palkia oversees other dimensions, the dimensional scream is a portion of his own power that was transferred onto the player and allows the player to see into different dimensions that represent different time periods, i.e. the past and future events triggered by the dimensional scream. This is why Darkrai offers for you to join him. Upon meeting you, he realizes this, creating an illusion of your partner joining him to get you to do so as well. Why wouldn't he want another version of him or herself by his side to rule with, they would be unstoppable. Additionally, it is more than plausible that multiple Darkrai exist, and the one recruited later in the game could be a wholly separate entity. This theory boils down to the player being destined to continually meet and defeat their own self in a never-ending loop. 97. Europe's Female-Only Partners in many European versions of the Super Mystery Dungeon game, there is no choice but to have a female partner. Could this have in-universe implications, such as the regions from which the player and language originate from have experienced events that have caused Pokémon born at the same time as the partner to be female over male? We don't know why some Pokémon are male or female in their eggs explicitly. Could it have been the region suffered a heat wave or a cold snap that influenced the embryonic development, like with crocodile eggs, influencing the partner's gender? 98. Turning into an apple, the line of existence. If you use an itemizer orb that can turn Pokemon into items, but it gets reflected by a move, the player gets turned into an apple or other item and instantly fails the mission they are on. As we see with Palkia's removal of Darkrai, the very fabric of existence and matter is subject to change. Is the player now a sentient apple or otherwise erased from existence? When the player changes back, where was your consciousness stored? Have the other apples, such as big or perfect apples, similarly been transformed Pokemon that you've been eating? 99. Region Locked Rescue Codes Rescue codes are completely region locked and one cannot join an EU game from Japan, US to EU, etc. Perhaps interacting and communicating with a more removed timeline wherein the dominant language and culture of the world has changed makes communication between the teams impossible, the historical trajectory of each being too vast from the other. 100. None type, unknown type. Existing prior to the Gates to Infinity games are the moves Wide Slash, Vacuum Cut, and Excavate, and they all have the question mark, question mark, question mark type. While Excavate is an unobtainable status move and Vacuum Cut deals fixed damage akin to Sonic Boom, Wide Slash is a physical move which follows standard damage calculations. Both damaging moves bypass Wonder Guard and do not usually receive Stab. Why would these moves cease to exist after Gates to Infinity? A coincidence? Could there be more Pokemon types or just ones that are a mix of multiple, thus falling outside of the standard Pokemon typing? 101. Speed 2,147,483,647 The default speed in Pokemon Red and Blue in the main Pokemon data is obscene. There is a value that sets the default movement speed modifier. However, no Pokemon have a set value different from the regular speed. This value can change from negative 2 billion, etc., to positive 2 billion, etc., which is incredible given that the actual range of valid speed values is only 6. Why and how could anyone have actual negative speed? Perhaps akin to the Flash, that is what allows one to move forwards or backwards in time when coupled with a Pokémon's powers. Level 8. The Abyss 102. The Relic Fragment shows Wigglytuff and its holders. The Relic Fragment in Time, Darkness, and Sky chooses the explorer that goes to the Hidden Land by being extraordinarily well hidden. 
After all, Wigglytuff knew exactly where to go with the fragment and was also the one to suggest asking Torkoal for advice on finding the Hidden Land, a character the player team only knows by going to Waterfall Cave and triggering the secret mechanism that Wigglytuff knew about to begin with and a scene that is shown in a flashback from the dimensional screen. It makes more sense for an object of that magnitude to be hidden at the end of the world rather than at the beach in Treasure Town, which seems to be located especially close to the Brine Cave where it's supposed to go. Your partner did just find it on that beach, so perhaps Wigglytuff cast it back into the sea for its new holder to be chosen. And that Pokemon is the partner. Our Kabutops and Omastar, literal fossil Pokemon, the guardians of this ancient relic, posing as an additional challenge for those foolish enough to tread there. Like Wigglytuff, they must make the journey there, relatively on their own, as a means to prove themselves worthy. How or why the holders are chosen is unknown. 103. Possess Orb The Possess Orb is an item found in the game's code and is accessible through cheats that allows the leader to, quote, enables the leader to possess a friend and survive. What does it mean by possess a friend? Does it mean that upon fainting, the friend will temporarily play host to the player's consciousness until they can be healed? Will the two forever be sharing a mind and body, or does the leader take over the host's body, effectively body jumping from one Pokemon to the next, as a parasite, each time it happens? Do the original Pokemon being possessed have a voice, or are they hollowed out, spiritless, like Duskinor wished to do to Grovile? In particular, the survive portion seems to have darker implications of death that would have befallen the user. Could the player actually have faced permadeath, necessitating more careful decision-making, akin to a Fire Emblem game. 104. Psy-6 Pokemon In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon are assigned a range from 1, 2, or 4, with the given biggest Pokemon being Onyx or Lukia, for example. However, Waylord is far bigger than Onyx, and should be beyond a size 4. Onyx is a bit over 28 feet but Waylord is over 47. The Pokemon just stop growing in this world after a certain point as part of an evolutionary adaptation to their environment? Or do Pokemon continue to grow, becoming trapped in dungeons or locales once they get too big, stuck for the rest of their lives? 105. Pokemon are people. All Pokemon are people, as you, the player, transform into your true or compatible Pokemon or monstrous form based upon your personality. The Pokemon that believe themselves to be separate or unique from humans are so far removed from this process that it has been lost to time or otherwise expunged from their history. This better explains the shops and societies as well as the seemingly more thieving and violent tendencies of the Pokemon within this world. Thus, the Pokemon that you potentially catch in the mainline games originated from this world, no longer able to communicate with you, and are now forced to be kept as pets and to fight others by their completely human masters. Imask and Phantump once again, for example, are just the most brazen examples of this human connection. Could not all Pokemon and people have existed in one dimension? suddenly separated and transformed through their own dimensional portals that brought them to their new, respective worlds. 106. Every copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is exactly the same. The theory is that every copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is the same, but the moment that you begin answering questions begins branching the timeline and reality from one to the next. On the other hand, it could be that, no matter who you are or what you do, you are destined to complete the events of the game, regardless of your personality or decisions. 107. The Second Unused Fantasy Strait There are 20 unused coordinates on the Air Continent in various dungeons, such as the Second Fantasy Strait that was originally programmed to appear at the coordinates 183-9 on the map. This unused dungeon shares the same name as one that does exist. The presence of two locations, potentially from separate timelines that have alternate physical locations as well. Could they have, due to the formation of the continents, being the result of legendary Pokemon's influence, have formed in such different ways, 
yet being based on the same original earth and corals and organic matter prior to this shift. Sealed away for now, could these locales be of this similar make, hidden away in a pocket of time and space, waiting for some event and code to unlock them, recognizing their existence? 108. Branching Realities, Ultra Wormholes Let's assume that there are three main realities or dimensions. That of the real, human world that we exist in, the Pokemon world where trainers and humans reside, and the purely Pokemon or Mystery Dungeon world. How do people and Pokemon travel between these worlds? The Ultra Wormholes, of course. What is an Ultra Wormhole but a tunneling portal that links alternate planes of existence? Duskenor, Darkrai, and Palkia create similar wormhole-esque creations from which they can transport themselves across time and space. And it is what occurs inside these wormholes, these links to alternate realities, wherein profound changes can occur. Say, for example, a human can turn into a Pokemon, or a human can turn into an Ultra Beast, for example. And some very much enjoy their new forms. And that is another one in the books. As always, if you have any feedback, suggestions, or criticism, I would love to hear it down in the comments. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day!